of the things that was startling to me was that so many of the women undergraduates mm -hmm. felt that gender was still an issue. And uh, if I go back to the beginning of my career, I would have thought by now it would be no issue at all. And I don't know if the people here feel it to be an issue or feel it to be not as much an issue as the students on the film. So I think I'm, I'm closer to their understanding than earlier generations. I mean, the, the, the key thing that seemed to show up in the film was that they started out knowing that gender was an issue, and then by the end they recognized that it was much more about their personal identities that was much more of an issue. They had to decide who they were, and and of course gender plays into that, but it's not nearly as big of a problem. And, you know, in the end they could not come up with huge numbers of occasions where they thought that gender had actually hurt them. Um, and I think that's pretty I think that's a pretty typical experience in the post first wave feminist era of how you want to define. That's a really good point. Um, well I think that gender is still an issue. Um, I think that the way that we raise children are you know, young girls versus young boys, I think um, traditionally uh, I mean, I wasn't, I didn't have a traditional background. My dad was always pushing me to do math and whatnot. But, um, you know, what they were saying about playing with dolls and all of that, the socialization that young, we still give young girls, I think that makes a big difference. Um, it, and, you know, if people are exposed to math and science at a younger age, I feel like they might have a better, um, a better chance of actually pursuing something like that. So one of the key issues you think is that they're, like you, a living embodiment of certain cultural stereotypes that are just around. Yeah. And then I, I also think that um, what they were talking about with the 10-year track and children, I think that's another issue that is still uh, very important today that a lot of women are facing as they go further up in their careers. I think the film also showed how complex the system is, the cultural system is that mediates gender. Because as you mentioned, you know, your parents influenced you in certain ways, yet there are the dolls that the girls mentioned and the Barbie that hates math, and then um, there are your peer networks and how you talk about, you know, what you're going to do when you turn 21, are you going to get married, and are you going to have kids? I was actually surprised that the women didn't talk as much about their peer networks as I thought that they might. Um, and then, I, so I think about, the, I have two girls, and my girls are fairly young, they're four and six, so I waited to the post-tenure promotion, all that kind of stuff before having kids myself, but um, my six-year-old said to me, I was I've been trying to teach her how to read, and she says, well, I, I don't really, what did she say? I don't need to learn how to read because I'm going to become a mom one day. <laughs> I think, where do you get this stuff? Being in teacher education, we have to think about that as we work with teachers who work in the elementary school and the ways in which they engage young people with science and mathematics. It's more than just something that you learn in school. It's the perception that kind of governs the reality of student lives in. Because I've, I've actually had it pointed out in classes, oh, there's a lot of women here for a science class. And when you go into a class that has that um, idea overtly expressed, then you feel like you need to overcome it. And part of overcoming it is just beating the system. Um, so even if it's not strictly an enforced policy or anything, if the people in, within the class are study or whatever, feel that it's a reality, then it is. And that's what they'll work towards. But if somebody tries and ruptures that reality, the professor or whoever tries to get rid of that type of mm -hmm. mindset in the classroom, do you think there is room for change? Yeah, there there should be. Like, there's no reason it has to. There's no reason a woman, uh, any woman should feel like she has to beat everyone to be good. Like, right, right, right. And that's, it should change, and I think it can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to disagree a little bit. In, in my experience, I've never really felt like I have to work harder than the guys because I'm a girl. <coughs> I mean, I've always felt that I should work hard and do my best, but I've never felt that because I'm a woman and there aren't a lot of women in the class, I need to you know, prove that women are awesome and the best. 
you know, I, I know that there aren't a lot of women in my class, I definitely noticed that, but it, it's not something I feel that's really changed how I act uh, in terms of my uh, uh, performance and homework and things like that. I hope that, um, I think we're all getting to a point too where we're realizing there's a lot of nuance in this kind of a discussion. I think the film highlights the subtlety of the era that we live in. Um, as Kathy was referring before to the way things had been in the past and how uh, issues of gender were perhaps more obvious and more easy to point your finger at and say this needs to be fixed. But instead now we've advanced to the point where uh, everything is much more subtle. And so figuring out a way to address those issues also has to take on that same type of subtlety. And that's much more difficult than saying we need affirmative action or we need to um, you know, do X, Y, and Z. It's, it's a different stage that we're moving through now. Uh, and the solutions have to address that point. There was one um, little phrase that I wrote down from the film about regarding the willingness to change the culture. And that sometimes the uh, the iciness or um, policy or personal interpersonal interaction can be rather subtle. Those small things that are said that collect over time and end up um, weighting a person down. And sometimes it's hard to decipher whether this person was treating me this way or or interacting me in this way in relation to gender because it is so subtle, or or is it? we just don't get along and it's personality or is it, you know, um, that there's that question mark that it is, it is really, really subtle and that's what makes it difficult to tease out. So this is going to sound horribly pessimistic, but I graduated from college exactly 10 years before these women and we were having the same conversation and had the same insecurities 10 years earlier and it didn't seem like that much had changed. So it's a rather glacial change that you can really expect going forward, I think. It doesn't, you know, we, we were not the generation that was actively discriminated against. So we still, we had all the subtleties that were raised by the past two people who were speaking. And I don't think that the culture has changed that substantially. I wonder so. what that says about, you know, liberating men in this kind of environment <laughs> as well. You know, to feel that they can express some of these issues. Yes? Um, with that, I think it is... A change that comes really slowly because a lot of it just comes from like bouncing off of people as you grow up because like um like my mother didn't grow up in a household where like her mom didn't work her dad was in science but her mom wasn't whereas i grew up in a household where both parents were in science and i had friends whose parents were in science so and then you come to school and you have the opportunity to interact with other women or just people and in disciplines that you're interested in and that like combination of small events over time will build up into bigger change but it's yeah like it is a very glacial process because each of the changes is so small but it can make a big difference i think that um that the pace of changes is very slow and it's a human nature problem and people who know me know that i always say that people don't change after they're born like they really come out <laughs> and they they have a certain <laughs> character, and then they go with that. And you can change it marginally. This is my opinion, of course. But change it marginally, and, and, um, but not in a dramatic way. Very hard to make dramatic changes, I believe. So then I think we're stuck with a pretty generational uh, level of change, which is it's difficult to accept, especially if you're 20 years old. I think it's extremely difficult to accept that things may take 20 years to change. Yeah, I, I agree absolutely with that, that I think Generations are probably the correct measure of the rate of change. Um, to give a couple of personal examples, um, my mother wanted to take physics in high school, and so she went to sign up for physics, and the physics teacher wouldn't permit her to take physics because girls weren't allowed to take physics. And so she took bookkeeping instead. Um, <laughs> it was a long time ago. Uh, and then, uh, but literally, I mean, they, they wouldn't let her take physics. Um, when I was in eighth grade, uh, my ideal university that I really wanted to attend was Caltech, and it didn't take women. And so uh, things were changing gradually. It's, it's going to require 
you know, slow and subtle transformation of consciousness on a daily basis, the way that you interact with each other. And then that is going to find ways to make changes in policies, either in your departments or in school systems or through programs that reward risk and boldness and change and participation. So how that really happens, it sounds like it's really up to us to continually reinvent. 